Actions on Philip Sternheimer, who's got pocket kings. He raises to 22,000. Vitaly Lunkin's got queens. See you at the river. Three bet to 56,000. Watson folds the small blind. Negranu folds the big blind. It's back on Sternheimer. Both these guys should be looking to get it in. This is a really tiny three bet from Lunkin, so we may see another small four bet rather than a straight shove. Sure enough, a small four bet from Sternheimer to 132,000. I know Vitaly is older and all, but there's no way he folds this, right? Well, this is weird. A five bet from Lunkin. It's not a shove, but it is a virtual all in. Most of his chips have just gone across the line. And is Phil Sternheimer Hollywooding, or is he genuinely getting sick in the gutty works over there? You got kings, bruh. And then he got like 200. 200 sentence trail offs. Yes, just 199 more to go. Like 300 behind. Oh, he was counting. Surely they're going to get the rest in here. I think that was a legit groan. Talk about first world problems. There aren't many players that would be taking this long against. Wow, this is a legit decision. Somebody de the bakery because this is one hell of a nit roll. I guess he thinks Lincoln never five bets with anything less than aces. Well, Tali, you got one of two hands, I guess, or maybe three. And you're crushing all but one of them. So I gotta think about it a bit more. You show me if I fold? I know there's a chance that Lincoln shows up with aces, but you're never folding here. All right, boys. Well, Sternheimer has only called. He's left himself 61K behind. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go all in blind. That would have been way more dramatic had it actually been all in. Well, I think the rest is about to go in. I, I'm gonna buy it. It's not too late to fold. Sure enough, he's betting 61,000 blind before a flop is dealt, and Lunkin has called. Can we turn him over now yes. or wait yeah, to the flop? Yes, yes. Boy, is this table gonna be surprised when they see him turn over those kings. And Lunkin shows the queens. Pocket Kings has a Heimer lock on this hand. Why is he standing up though? Well, officially he is the player at risk, even though he is an 82% favorite here. Uh, what are you thinking, yeah, what are you thinking about? Yeah. Like Vitaly, you can easily have aces there, you know? I respect your play. Mm -hmm. This pot is worth 1.45 million. Oh. There's a queen! There's two of them! Not bad. Uh, Quads for Lunkin! Wow, that was grosser than when your shoelace comes undone in a public bathroom. Not bad. Hold on, he can still hit running kings. Sternheimer with less than 1% equity. And now drawing dead. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed death by quads. Action at the main feature table on Vitaly Lunkin, looking down at pocket tens. Vitaly's tight, but I, I think he's gonna raise this. From mid position, it's a min raise to 32,000. Seven, eight suited for Phil Grissom in the big blind. Pretty easy pre-flop spot. Phil knows he's probably not ahead of Lunkin's tightish range, but that means if he hits with this hand, he might be able to scoop a nice pot. He calls and pairs his seven, but it's top set for Lunkin. Okay, that was implied odds. Now let me tell you a little bit about reverse implied odds. That's all the money Phil's gonna lose if he makes two pair or trips here. He checks to Lunkin. Who continues for 35,000. It's a pretty small bet. Lunkin probably doesn't want to lose his customer, but we know Phil probably would have called more if he was calling anything. Phil calls. And now has two pair on the turn. That's not going to be good for business. He is officially drawing dead. And it looks like he's going to lead. 60,000. Some folks are going to raise here, and those folks are people you should make sure on the list for your home game. No need to raise here. Phil happens to have one of the few worst hands that can call and has no equity, but there aren't many. Lincoln just calls. We go to the river. Which is another seven. Both players now with a full house. Suffice to say, Grusom has the losing house. That card is a disaster for him. Almost no way he doesn't go broke here. Pardon the double negative. He leads a second time, 110,000. All in. And Lunkin shoves on him. And Grusom hasn't snap called. Well, Phil finds himself in a similar position to Philip Sternheimer earlier on day two. 
facing a huge bet from Lunkin with an incredibly strong hand, but because of Lunkin's rock-like image, he fears it's not the best hand. It's really not much more to call, but it's for his tournament life. That might be a slow roll. <laughs> Just to inform you, okay? <laughs> Just checking. I only lose to tens and then eights. Nine, ten of clubs also pretty strong here. I call. He calls, he had to call, and sees that Lunkin had one of those hands. Brutal. Mike McDonald, King Queen suited, under the gun, raises to 200k. Tali Lincoln has got sixes in the small blind. Yeah, we're probably not folding pairs at this stage. Lincoln has taken the chip lead. He starts the hand with 4.6 million. He calls. Steve O'Dwyer in the big blind has King Jack off suit. Steve's got a solid hand with some sweet pot odds. He calls as well. So we are going three way to the flop. 2-6 is the slight favorite here, three ways. The flop. Queen, Queen, six. Trips for McDonald, a full house for Lunkin. I haven't seen a cooler this six since the time they had an airlift Robert Downey Jr. a new liver. Check, check. Action on the preflop aggressor. Really good chance Mike continues for value right now. Typically he'd be looking for calls from ace high. He bets 250,000. In general, I like a smooth call here. Well, this looks like a raise. Lunkin check raises to 750,000. O'Dwyer's out. In this case, it's probably gonna work out fine, but in general, when you check raise here, you're only getting paid when your opponent has a queen. And if your opponent does have a queen, you're probably gonna get most of the chips anyway. Cool. McDonald calls the raise. We go to the turn. It's not a matter of if the chips are going in, it's when. This is the worst thing to happen to a Michael McDonald since the Doobie Brothers broke up. Eight of spades. McDonald has less than a pot size bet behind. Lunkin's got nothing to worry about on this board. Lunkin bets half pot, one million. Mike's got just two million left. Well, surely this is where he makes his move. Oh, yeah. He shoves. Snap call. High call. Close enough. Mike McDonald drawing thin. Sucks. Did he say six or sucks? He needs a king, queen, or eight. He's got six outs. The river card. It's the case six. He should have said queen. The tiny Lincoln in the small blind on the button has a seven. Well, this is certainly a raise heads up. Starts the hand with 3.6 million. Obviously at a significant chip disadvantage at the moment. He's gonna figure it out. Raise. Raise? He's announced raise. He makes it 240,000 total. Eric Seidel's got queens. If Eric Seidel doesn't three bet here, I'll eat my hat. How much to make it? And how will Lunkin respond to that three bet? Well, he definitely doesn't want to chase away the action. Seidel does three bet. He re-raises to 725,000. Dang it, I wore my special Nacho Sombrero hat today. I'm gonna have a bite anyway. What did I do in a previous life to deserve this? Well, Lunkin may put in another bet here, especially if Eric's been three betting a lot and he'd be totally justified in doing so. We know Vitaly's crushed, but heads up is a leveling war. He's supposed to be raising wide, so Eric is usually gonna be three betting wide. Nolan. Lunkin shoves. I caught. Seidel calls. And this could be it. Seidel is a 71% favorite to win this hand and win this tournament. If Vitaly goes out, still a good run. He's only played two huge buying events in his life, and both times he's made it to heads up. Lunkin looking for an ace. And there is an ace on the flop. Now he's got a really good shot at going two for two and wins. 
Lunkin now a 9-1 to one favorite to double up. Seidel looking for a queen to take the title. I don't think that was the finger Eric wanted to be using. The turn card is another 10. No runner runner sweat for Seidel. A queen and only a queen. Will Lunkin get the double up? Yes, he does. Well, you can't win heads up unless you have the lead first. Matali Lunkin first to speak. Pocket kings. That's a pretty good hand. You think? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Race. Lincoln min raises. Seidel also has a pair, sixes. Pair versus pair, heads up, this is a massive cooler. Seidel's been grinding this guy down, it looks like he's about to double up again. Oh. Oh. Seidel shoves. Alun? I call. No kidding! He's so cute! At the risk of stating the obvious, this is a huge hand. If Seidel sucks out, and that will happen one time in five, he will win the super high roller. If Lunkin doubles up, he'll have a massive chip lead. Ten and a half million against Seidel's two million. Wow, that does give Seidel some hope. Now he can hit a three as well as a six. Seidel again with a real shot at closing this out. A 24% chance. Six outs he can hit. He'll need to hit on the river. Just one card to come. 86% of the time, Vitaly Lunkin will get the double up. It's a seven. Kings hold. Seidel on the button in the small blind. First to speak. Looks down at King Queen. Eric has got one move. Come on. And that is the move, all in. Lunkin. I call. <laughs> calls him with ace five. Told you they were getting tired. Who needs all that thinking on the flop turning river? Just ship it in and let the poker gods sort him out. Lunkin gets it in good. Seidel does have two live cards, but if ace high holds, Vitaly Lunkin has won this event. Even if Seidel does double up, Lunkin will still have quite a chip lead. Ace six six. Lunkin with a hammer lock on this hand. And a hammerlock on the tournament. Almost flops him dead. Seidel looking for running cards. Drawing dead on the turn. It's over. No good for Eric. Seidel uh, 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 the runner-up. Lunkin the victor.